Um, so what I'm gonna be reviewing right now is all the stuff I got at Comic-Con and um, some of the stuff I saw, so this should be fun. Um, the first thing I did when I got to Comic-Con, I like got my little badge and of course, if you didn't see it, they just wanna hurt us continually. Just in case you forgot how you've been betrayed by The Walking Dead, don't worry. Don't worry, they got you. First, first thing. Fuck you. The second thing that I did was go to the Her Universe fashion show, which was amazing. I was not expecting it to be this amazing because last year I had convinced myself that it wasn't gonna be as amazing because I didn't get to fucking go. Because we got lost and turned around. There's a difference in between the Hyatt and Marriott. Mainly that they're different fucking places, but anywho. So I convinced myself that so it's like, oh, it'll be okay. It'll be all right. Even though I did see the Sailor Moon gown a billion and two times on Tumblr. And I was just like, whatever, that was probably like only a good dress. Whatever. No, it was fucking amazing. It was absolutely every single costume that was up there, every single work of art that was like running down the runway was uh, fucking amazing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you that right now. Entertainment, medical professionals, teachers, the military, scientists, just to name a few. We are surrounded by powerful women everywhere. We have an amazing community of fans. And I ask them to tell me what comes to mind when they hear the phrase, powerful woman. I received an overwhelming response, and here are some of your answers. A powerful woman is a woman with confidence, a force to be reckoned with. She knows her strengths and weaknesses. She defies the odds. She chooses her own path. She stands her ground. She fights and defends her country. She learns from her failures. Powerful women come in all shapes and sizes. She lifts up and encourages others as well as herself. She listens to both her head and her heart, and she knows when to let each one guide her. She determines her own self-worth. She changes the world. She leads with fierce determination. She advocates for those who cannot advocate for themselves. She doesn't let the muggles get her down. She is kind and humble. All women are powerful. The last point sums up the message we hope to spread tonight. In the words of Glinda the Good Witch, you had the power all along, my dear. All women are powerful in their own right. If you are currently searching for your power, it's already inside you. You just need to believe. Thank you for joining us tonight as we celebrate the power of fashion, fandom, and the hero inside of us all. DJ Amanda Jones, let's get this fashion show started. So that was Ashley Eckerson, who is the hostess of uh, her universe, or the owner of it, rather. Um, and I was tearing up a bit during that speech. <laughs> um, I thought it was very heartwarming and cool. Um, and that dress is made that uh, Ashley is wearing is made out entirely out of Legos, so that is really, really cool. And I slowed this next portion down because everyone had to see the exact amount of slayage that was on the runway. This is the Diana dress that turns into Wonder Woman. That's amazing. If you don't think that's amazing, then get up out of my face. So the correct proper name of the dress is Diana on the Town. And the designer is Andriana Sanchez. Ugh, just her poses and everything. She, ugh. She, like, slayed my life. Ugh. Here's the P Captain Prisma dress made by Lindsay Hamilton. And that mermaid silhouette is slaying my life. And it's a corset back. Watch as she turns. As if the sequence wasn't enough. Lord. This is the Fury Fashionable Furiosa dress made by Hannah Mae Kent. And it's called, Oh, What a Gown, What a Lovely, Lovely Gown. And I love, again, the mermaid silhouettes are slaying my fucking life and how it looks like 
clouds billowing from a dusty engine. Oh, my lanta. She just killed this. This next one is Grace Duval's The Dragon Beyond the Wall. What I really like about this is like, oh no, I'm not just one character. You think I'm just one? No, no. Just watch this shit. Boom. Two. You thought I was Jon Snow? You thought I was Lady Jon Snow? No. I'm the mother of dragons. Shoot. Oh, did, did you think I was done? <laughs> just two? Just two? Really? No. Here I go. Boom. And now we're Sansa Stark. <laughs> I like she didn't just stop at two. You know what I mean? She, she went for it. Which is great. This next one, I would literally wear to the fucking grocery store. A Russian-inspired Sailor Neptune by Linda Chekhov, the Soldier of Embrace. Like, where are you going, Lily? I don't know. Ow. Michelle Ramsey's Princess of Legend flapper dress, which I think that her universe needs to put in production yesterday. Sarah Raynard's Ode to the Goblin King. Ooh, she is going places with that number. I like it. I feel like it's somebody could wear that to prom or your enemy's wedding, you know, just show up. This girl's, okay, this looks like it's seriously, I just want to roll in it. I just want to roll. It's Kristen Kolga's uh, Last Man on Earth dress. This is Alsa Alcala's Rage On dress, the Rage Virus. And when I say I want rhinestones, I mean, I want that amount of rhinestones on just literally everything. And she was rocking the shit out of that dress and her ball head. This is Lauren Andrews, my kind of crazy. Um, it's called the, it's the Red Hood. I kind of like it because it's like... Raiden meets DC Universe. This is Sarah Hambly's Hannibal, Hannibal's design, the Red Dragon Sounds of the Lambs dress. Um, and this reminds me of a lot of the headdresses you kind of see on Pinterest and a lot of like Eastern European stuff, which is just really, I fucking dig it. And everything is hand done. It's simply stunning. This is Selena Zawacki, I believe her name is pronounced, in the Always Dress from Harry Potter. And this dress made the fucking theater kid in me swoon because she picked every single fabric. Just look at that. It's Snape's fucking Patronus. Are you kidding me? And the reason why her top doesn't show up nearly as much as her bottom is because she used velvet and velvet absorbs lights. Ding! In case you guys are ever wondering about theater and lighting is just a fucking brilliant dress. Cynthia Kirkland, the car that Gotham deserves. Old girl made herself into a car, a Batmobile. I love that idea. I absolutely love it. This is Lynn Marie Martin's uh, TARDIS through the wormhole. And ugh, this is just so fluffy. I feel like this is a very interesting design because it's basically, instead of seeing the same Tartar's dress that we've seen in the past, she's actually the final frontier. Look at her go. Just the, the cut and the silhouette of it to the construction that goes behind having that much tool and lighting and things that could possibly go wrong and it's executed fairly flawlessly. And the colors, no, no less. Just, oh, this is one of my favorites. Gushing. Alexandria Raystar Ray. Uh, a promised new life from Howl's Moving Castle. Laura Christina Ortiz, I believe it is. Uh, this is the Wally dress, and it's completely made out of recyclable materials. So I thought that was such a cute idea. And the model she picked just slayed entirely. This is Erica Williams and Expecta Patronus, which is a Harry Potter thing. I loved the textures that she utilized with the different fabrics and how they moved. 
It was absolutely gorgeous with the grays and she just looks like a little fairy princess and I love it. It's Harmony Leaker in Newt's Marjorie and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. There is so much going on here as far as constructions. The gathers and the dress and just how she incorporated that style and dragon wings in the back. Super cool and I like that color too. This is Camille Falcula and I solemnly swear I'm up to couture the Harry Potter's Marauder map. Okay, this dress starts off with blank. It's still blank, it's still blank, and we don't know exactly how they did it, but just you watch. Oh my fucking God, it changes into the goddamn Marauder's map and the folds of the fabric and everything look like the actual goddamn Marauder's map. I cannot with this dress. It is so, amazing the map appears before you i don't know what kind they had, like actually went to hogwarts i guess and now you're here at her her universe fashion whatever this is tanya opuya's design the story that lived it is the harry potter book and what she does with the layering of the fabrics and the folds and the corsets it's just amazing just watch I think their her use of fabric is absolutely stunning and brilliant. Her model's cute as a button. You turn that page, girl. The story that lived. This design is by Jess, and it's Falcor from the Neverending Story, done in a beautiful like rococo design and that purse matching accessories Ugh, look at that train just all of the uses of the textured fabrics and the asymmetrical shoulders and sleeves and stuff just oh everything's perfect nothing hurts and there were a few designers in there that i didn't get for whatever reason um, I think I was messing with my camera or something. Uh, but the guy right behind Princess Diana is Michael Yale with the Crimson Spellcaster. Carlita La Violetta with Ruby. And there's Martha Cauldron with the Pokemon wedding dress. Rose Ivy with the First Order of Fashion. Judith Armas Aureliana, the force is strong in her. Erica Angulia, the Huntress, Supernatural, Dean Winchester. And I feel like I got everyone else except for those three, which I'm so sorry that I uh, missed, especially the four, First Order of Fashion because that was a really, well, it was simplistic. It was a really super uh, elegant design. And the Dean Winchester one was hand dyed and you know, they were all really, really good. I was just not on it with my camera and I feel really, really bad. Um, but here are the awards being passed out. Furiosa took the uh, judge's favorite and for the audience favorite, we had the Marauders map. And I think, I think you guys can still vote for the Her Universe um, uh, online thing. So maybe this will help, you know about that um but yeah that's the whole fashion show okay now we're gonna get into the goodie bag so on top of like being able to see this amazing fucking designer runway fashion show pretty much for free um you also got a little free goodie bag that was like put together by loot crate which pretty awesome um, the things that I was excited about was like the little, the little plushy guy. These I kind of can't wait to use. I was like, I'm going to be really generous and give them to my niece. No. No, I'm not. That's not even a thing I'm going to do. Um, we got the Hello, I'm a Fangirl pin. And it's like glittery in the background. And the... Epic BB-8 socks 
that are absolutely amazing. Wow. So that's a, that was what was in the loot bag, and that was kind of like a really good Comic-Con kickoff because I was there with my friend Marina, and she was writing about it for a couple different places, so I'll try to link that below because she's a really good author. Um, you should look up her stuff. And then the rest of the con was kind of just meandering around, and I don't like to... You ain't gonna catch me waiting in line for nothing. Like, unless it is a panel that I really want to go see, I'm not waiting in line to purchase, like, anything aside from food. And even then, I will fucking walk off-site and get me somewhere where I can sit the fuck down because you're gonna pay, like, 18 billion dollars for a pizza anyway. Ugh, ugh, getting off track. Anyways, so mainly what I like to spend my money on is the smaller press tables. The smaller press tables is kind of where it's at any fucking way. Um, because you can find all sorts of amazing stuff. And here is some of the amazing stuff I got. First, I got a present for my friend. She doesn't know about that. Well, I think she does. Yeah, she does. <laughs> so this is the present that I got from super creepy, like, missing face Victorian lady. And it has, like, a little wax seal. I don't know if you can see that. Like a... And the artist is Karen Sio, but it's like, I think it's a Chinese last name, so it's like the, the H is silent, I think. I don't know. I'm terribly white. Um, I got a gift, which was amazing, because I don't really, you know. My boyfriend got me Women in Science, which is something, like the animation, not animation, the artwork in it is so cute. Who is this? Rainy Chase. Yeah. So that's like a, I would recommend this for like if you have like a girl in your life that likes science or any like girl coming up. This book right here and it's by 50 Fearless Pioneers Who Changed the World written and illustrated by Rachel I'm not even going to pronounce her last name and butcher it. I will just put it in the link below. One of the things that I always do every single Comic Con, which I'm fairly pleased that I do it, because <laughs> um, a lot of people talk about how um, comics in general, how we're supposed to be able to talk about like really adult stories and um, why can't we talk about really adult themes? And usually my argument is like, well, we can talk about adult themes. We can completely do that. That's something that we can entirely do. But if you could not throw women in garbage cans and refrigerators, that would be fucking phenomenal. And the reason why I kind of, I buy this every year. It's like the year supply of Tara Witch of the Black Rose, which is essentially porn. It's like, they deal with a lot of sexuality and like, sorry, over 18, whew, like a lot of that. And I always just find it funny that like no one ever mentions this comic when they're like, and they have dealt with like things like sexual assault and you know, stuff like that. And they deal with it in a way where the women are you know, terrified, and, well, not terrified, but they're like, you know, it's done in a respectful manner. It's like, look, women can run around in next to nothing, and you can still respect us, and, you know, have us as characters with people and thoughts and ideas of our own. Weird. Fucking weird. So, I mean, good, good on you, Jim Bellant. I've, <laughs> and if you would like to see vintage Lily Holiday, I am an issue... as a broadsword girl. Ay. I, I always like buy as many. I'm, I'm like missing a year because one year I was, you know, working and I couldn't get to the booth, but I always like to support them. They're a smaller publishing company or a publisher. So go buy Terror Witch of the Black Rose. It's sexy pornography that doesn't hurt a, a person. I'm here for it.
here and now, here for. It's 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 like porn with witchcraft. Like how can you go wrong with porn and witchcraft? It's like the two meet and make Terror Witch the Black Rose, which is phenomenal. Who doesn't like that? Speaking of witchcraft, I got the Sabrina the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which is like right where they sell the Archie comic books, so I thought, fuck it, why not? I will read you, and I feel like I'm either going to love this shit or hate it, so we'll find out. Um, another thing that I was really, really excited about was every year, I don't know why I do this, but I walk past um, this girl's booth and I'm like, every year I'm, I'm gonna buy one of her books or I'm gonna buy one of her art prints and I don't know why I just don't fucking like, bitch you're already here, like you're never gonna do it over the internet, what are you doing? So I finally bought the Rainbow Children. She's one of my favorite, favorite artists, um, the Rainbow Children, Camille Diero, Diarico? I can't pronounce anyone's names, it's fine, it's whatever. But her illustrations are just pretty breathtaking. I pretty much friggin' like I got this one, which is her, like, uh, colla- no, not a collaboration. Um, it's a compilation of this type of art that she was doing. Collection. Collection of Rainbow Children. And then I got her graphic novel, which is cool because it's very sketchy and kind of monochromatic throughout the whole book. So it's a really cool thing, and I got them both. And so since I got them both, she drew a little picture. Yay! I thought that was really cute. And <laughs> weirdly enough, my favorite thing that I bought was actually um, one of the cheaper things I bought just because it had so much amusement behind it and it was like, I don't know. So it was <laughs> mm -hmm. the Mean Girls Club and I figured it just reminded me of me and my friends so much that I had to purchase it because we're all misandrists pretty much. Pretty much. Um, like, they just, they do, like, ridiculous things, like, collect people's tears, you know? They have a clubhouse, you know, where they're just, just kicking it, just being bad. They, at one point, knock over a, a lingerie, a lingerie truck. A, Another point, like, they go to a hospital, and, uh, they're like, Hi, miss, how can I help you? The nurse is like that, and the other girl's that's like, We're the drug sister, and they punch her. It's beautiful. This is just, just a whole heap of beautiful. Just, ah, here we go. <laughs> can I help you? Punch. We're the drug sister. Like, and the whole fucking book is entirely like this. Like, there isn't... There isn't a downbeat. It's, it's all killer, no filler. And it was like six bucks. So, I'll link that also down below. What else? What else? My other favorite thing I got. Okay, so I got this art print. And it is by... Um... Shit. What is her name? Now I feel like an asshole because I was like, ah, I love you and I'm gonna follow you on Instagram, which I did. But I follow like 80 billion people on Instagram, so shit. But this art print I'm really excited about because I was really inspired by it. So I started making a costume um, for a burlesque number that is exactly like this so I'm really inspired by it and I'm gonna tag the artist and when I'm done with it and making my hair pink again and I'm gonna dance on top of a giant macaroon it's the good shit in life you know what I mean it's dancing on top of a giant macaroon that makes it all worth it that's pretty much all the art and comic books I got 
But now on to the fun stuff. I went shopping. This amazing t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got this other, I think it's a tank top. Yeah, I got a tank top. It's a unicorn fighting a freaking raptor. I dare you to find anything more epic than a unicorn and a raptor doing battle. Why are they fighting? Who knows? I don't know. But unicorn fighting a raptor t-shirt. It's gonna be at the gym with my unicorn fighting a raptor t-shirt. Let's see, oh, my earrings, my lovely, lovely earrings I got. I got from the Five and Diamond uh, booth, which has an Instagram that I will link them. And they have like, I think they have an online shop, but I think they're in LA. Um, my friend Alexia was working for them, so I got these little earrings and all their stuff is like really cool. If you fucking go to Burning Man, you're gonna need that shit. They're like all pouches and goggles and things like that, but these earrings are a little bit more on my speed because I'm an indoor cat, so. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, hopefully I can edit this down to where I'm not like, um, mm, uh. If you guys have any questions or if I am unable to find something, let me know. Otherwise, thank you for enjoying my San Diego Comic-Con haul. Yeah. <laughs>